and welcome to MBS Show, episode number 319. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, everybody. How are you doing, man? Everything's been fine, other than I am suddenly unemployed, so it's kind of difficult. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, how are you holding up, man? Uh, just been staying at home, not doing anything. Oh, no. <laughs> Have you not tried to go looking for the works? Well, I am, but... Still don't prepare anything. Uh, all right. <laughs> I do hope that you get back on your feet, man. It's, it's hard yeah. to keep your brother not having a job. Yep, yep, I know, I know. So, it's been a while. So, how have you been, man? Like, besides the not being employed? Everything's been fine. Other than the fact that I managed to get some of my... Nearly all my components fixed now. Oh, yeah. Right now, the only... Yeah. Because... Everything right now, my, I got back my motherboard from the war, war, uh, manufacturer warranty, mm-hmm. and I also got back my my audio interface. So right now, I'm the only thing that is waiting is uh, my GPU. Oh yeah, the graphics card. Uh, how's that? That one is from uh, what you call this? Mastrop, right? Yeah, that one is from Mastrop. So right now, because I have in uh, contacted Mastrop previously, but because they did say that uh, for some reason that their one year warranty is over. But I did like go past them. I did ask MSI about it. They did say, oh, uh, you have to refer to the USA MSI. So I did check on their website. It says that it's three years. Oh. So my, my graphic card is actually still valid in warranty. Okay. So I actually have shipped back the, my graphic card all the way to USA. <laughs> mm, so good. Uh. Yeah. So but the only problem is that the ending point is that you, I may need a USA address, so I, so in the end, I still need to pay over for a shipping to get it back. Mm, so good. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Some people might say that it's much better to buy a new one instead. I don't know, because I choose to buy it cheap, so this happens. But overall, it's, it's not that bad, lah, frankly speaking. It's rather better than I cannot do even a return to our uh, manufacturer. Oh. That would be even worse, because I would have a big, Huge paperweight and like <laughs> sitting around, uh, and I would cry, man, because considering I spent about maybe about four hundred, five hundred, uh, about six, five, six hundred US dollar just for the tiny my Nvidia ten eighty uh, graphic card. This is a ten eighty Ti. No, it's just a standard ten eighty. Uh, I wish it's a ten eighty Ti, but sorry, man, it's the the GPU market is still not yet. It's still recovering. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, even with the whole. Uh, decline of what you call this um, Bitcoin mining, yeah, th- this one seems to, yeah, it's still up there. It hasn't recovered yet. We- we'll soon see. We'll soon see. So anywho, let's get into the news. So in the first news, the new set of QD Mark Crew promo image arrives. So if you don't know, uh, Hasbro has this new toy line called the QD Mark Crew. Yeah, and essentially this is just a figure of the ponies, but they chibi it. They make it look really, really cute. And if you notice, last week we mentioned about the McDonald's promo toys. Uh, this is that, except that um, I'm not 100% sure if it's the same size or not, but you'll get more choices in the Cutie Mark crew, except that it's a blind bag and stuff. So yeah. Are you sure it's blind bag? It doesn't look like blind bag to me. Yeah, if you take a look, see, or if you click on the link in the link below, and if you click on Curie Mark Crew on the first line of text, uh, they'll show you uh, a example of a box of how it look like. Because um, in the UK, uh, there's a shop called Draco, and they list the box of how it's supposed to look like, and it's blind bags. Ah, makes sense. Still, it's one of those things where, oh, wow, this is cool. I would like to have it, but I don't know how much. Did you know the blind bags in Malaysia are pretty expensive? Yep, that one I know. Yeah. Because here in here in, uh, here in in Brunei, well, we still have Toy R Us. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> it's cost us one blind bag is about uh, $490. $490. $490. That's that. If you convert it, that would be about... 16 ringgit yeah but still like blind bags should be cheap not expensive that's just ridiculous i don't know yeah it is ridiculous well let's just hope the cutie mark crew toys would be much better 
I mean, it looks awesome. It looks cute. It looks adorable. And hey, it's there. I mean, I would like to buy some. And um, just an additional bonus, not in the docket. Uh, McDonald's Happy Meal Toys promotion is having ponies now, ponies and Transformers. And this is the same batch as the one that is in South Korea and in Russia too. And I think other and countries... also Philippines. Yeah, yeah. And also Philippines. So yeah, it's there. But the unfortunate thing is that we only got four out of the eight. So yeah. But it's still better than nothing. Oh, true speaking. that. <laughs> you know, you, you know. To be honest, I rather have nothing than not all. And that's the cor- collector's peril. Uh, I mean, I I don't mind. Like, okay, the thing is that when you, once you, once anybody sees like, oh, we had like a certain a certain place have like eight items, but in the country we only get like four. That is like hmm. my my collector's vision. I want all of them. Yeah, <laughs> and I I think I had a nice chat with Charles about this, and he asked why we don't have all the other four. And my answer to him is, and this is just pure speculation, is that uh, they're going to have a second wave of the toys, which would make sense. But I'm not 100% sure if it's true or not. What do you think? Is it true? Or it, does that speculation uh, hold water? It could be possibly be true. Because right, so far right now, we only seen the first four. But remember, previously we do have uh, ponies also, but there was brushables. Mm-hmm. Well, so in a sense, th- we can say that this is considered as a second wave right now. No, we didn't get po. <laughs> that that set two had problems because we only got a few out of the full lineup, if I remember right. I remember we only had four, and that time was like it was so popular that it got sold out. Even in East Malaysia, here in Miri, it was so hard to find yeah. some of them also. Yeah. <laughs> But still, let's just hope that this batch is going to be good because um, a lot of pony fans are going for it. I, I do hope that McDonald do release a second batch of pony toys um, to complete the full set. The other fours at least. Uh, what was it? I think it was Rarity, Applejack, Twilight and Spike. Yeah. Mm. So anywho, on to the second news. So a lot of people have been asking about uh, season 8, more specifically, the Twilight Friendship School. A lot of people are asking, what the hell is that? Yeah, I could agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what function does it do? What does Cheer Lee do? I mean, like, what? <laughs> Why does this school even exist? Why does Twilight want to make a school of friendship? <laughs> it, it feels kind of weird, like, out of nowhere, like, oh, Twilight is only as a school. It's like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I do agree that with my, that. I do agree with that. Like that was my pretty much my impression when I first saw season eight, which I wish for. In anyone who didn't know, I have not watched any of <laughs> one of the episodes for season eight. Other than I only know a few things here and there. Like one of them was uh, Spike has wings now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, somebody asked this to one of the writers, uh, Nicole Dubunk, and she replied saying that. Uh, this uh, Twilight School is a private school open to all ages and teaches a different curriculum than Miss Shirley's school, um, assuming that's the equestrian government's funded school. So, yeah, um, okay, makes sense, I guess. Um, yeah, but it doesn't really state why. <laughs> I mean, they could just open like a separate, like a, maybe like another classroom or something. At uh, the what you call Charlie School and just like teach there, it it would be just the same thing. But in the end, it was like seriously a school next to a cast next to the princess's castle. Uh, I don't know, oh. man. But um, overall, from what I understand, uh, you haven't seen the season yet, so you don't really get the full setup. So, um, in short summary, um, Twilight School is not part of the Equestrian Government School Board. So she's doing things her way and stuff, and Celestia approves of this. So I don't know the whole school gimmick. I don't know. Um, I I guess you guys have to wait for our season eight premiere review to get the full lowdown. Uh, as for now, this is a fun tidbit. Yay! Uh, private school funding in Equestria. Yay! <laughs> 
Uh, so let's head into the next news, and this one is uh, behind the voice actors 2018. Give me a second. What is this called? Um, behind the voice actor, it grabs a bunch of uh, MLP movie actresses. Basically, right? Uh, basically, the awards was uh, best for best female lead voice performance in a feature film, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and apparently, it was like three of the. Our pony characters got uh, nominated. Ashley Ball for Rainbow Dash, Emily Blunt as Tempest Shadow, and Tara Strong for Twilight Sparkle. Mm-hmm. And I'm on the website uh, behind the voice actors. Behind the voice actor is a website dedicated to well listing down the voice actors for characters in any medium and list, list down what they did and so on. So uh, I think they have the what you call the seventh annual uh, BTVA. Voice acting awards, something like that. So, um, yeah. some of the nominees for the well, how to put this? Some of the nominees are well, ponies. And it, this year, it seems that uh, base uh, best female lead voice performance in a feature film goes to well, the nominees are Ashley Ball as Rainbow Dash, Emily Bunt as Tempest Dash. Shadow, Rosario Dawson as Bad Girl slash Barbara Gordon. Sarah Chaudhry, 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 yes. Chaudhry as Parvana, Parvana from the Bread Winner, Winner, yeah, and Tara Strong as well as Parker in the Mother Pony movie 2017 and so on, and yeah, um, these are all interesting and fun. Um, I don't think this is huge thing. I mean, it's fun to vote for them if you want. Actually, there is one more, but per- surprisingly, EQD may may not have uh posted about uh, it best, but uh, uh, supporting uh, role Aduba also has, yeah. yeah the supporting role Uzo Aduba has also been nominated also as Queen Novo the best female lead is going to be Hard Pool I'm, I'm going to guess Emily Blunt is going to win hard for this one this is me yeah I do I do want to see uh, Emily Blunt win it actually <laughs> uh, I would like Ashley Ball but you have to remember Emily Blunt played an amazing Tempest like hmm well, the thing is that the thing is that Ashley and Tara they're already on the show most of the time. Emily is just like a guest. You can say it's a guest star mm-hmm, mm-hmm. coming onto the show. Yeah. So it would be nice if she got nominated. Actually, oh yeah, true, that, true. That. I mean, <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so well, that's that for the news for this week. Um, kind of a short news week. We didn't really have much. Hi, this is coming. Well, we're already in the hiatus as this episode comes out. So, yay! We get to rest and catch up on stuff. Let's head into the next topic. And that topic would be, what have we been doing with our week? So, anyway, Star, what have you been doing with your week? My week has been pretty much just stay at home, just uh, play games. Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) But I do catch up with news. And, uh, well, as of this news that came out, uh, Computex is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be finished soon. And also E3 is next week. Oh yeah, E3 is going to be next week. A lot of E3 leaks has been, well, leaked out. As per usual. I'm curious about some games because I... There's one game that I'm actually hoping to see more of. And that would be Two Point Hospital. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. It's a game that is based upon a very classic old game back in 1997, if I'm not mistaken. That would be the Team Hospital Made by Bullfrog Productions, which later becomes uh, not, uh, EA, which then it also released another uh, Bullfrog also separated and they released a different game called Black and White. Oh, Black, wait, Black and White. Isn't that the um, Peter Monuru game? Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Team Hospital was... Uh, so basically what happened was that so they've been wanting to do uh, what you call a, a spiritual successor to Team Hospital. So the creators of Team Hospital actually got together, started an indie indie studio, and they bam, they got they built Two Point Hospital. Oh. But at the same time, another interesting thing happened. Oh, another hospital game is also releasing this year. <laughs> it's called Project Hospital. Okay. <laughs> So the difference between these two is that uh, Project Hospital will be based upon real life uh, sim- uh, that, uh, sickness and whatnot. 
while S Two Point Hospital will be based upon uh comedies sickness. Oh, that, like just like Team Hospital. All right, all right. Well, and they also uh, happen to share Autumn 2018 release date. Oh God, <laughs> of the game. That's gonna be confusing. So you're excited for that? Yeah. Yeah, of course I'm excited for that. I I I played Team Hospital way long time ago. All right, all right. Enjoy the games that are coming out. Oh, personally, for me, I got no idea. Um, like I've been looking at, well, I really haven't been looking at the list because I don't really how to put this. I'm not really interested in the E trees. Like I'll just see what they announce and just be happy with it. Even with the spoilers that they talk about, I'm not really deep into it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I kind of agree. E three is always the day where they announce stuff. Anyway, mm-hmm. I mean, whether on big or small, is always there. Well, the only one I would be want to see more would be Nintendo talking more about their stuff. But though I do hear that Fortnite is gonna be releasing on Switch. Oh yeah, I've seen that too. Like that's announced, right? Or that's just rumored? In a sense, you could say it's kind of uh, announced yeah. because the E three was leaked. Oh, well, the show flow was leaked. Oh, yep. Oh, okay. So it was kind of thing. But and uh, <coughs> and I do want to see their uh, them talking more about their uh, Pokemon game. Oh yeah, that. That rumored, quote unquote, rumored Pokemon game, which has already been announced, but it's like, uh, Pokemon, let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee. That sounds like fun. Or, or the proper name for it is Pokemon Yellow slash Pokemon Go. <laughs> Pokemon Go. Yeah, yeah, Yellow Go. <laughs> uh, yellow Go, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but uh, because it is based upon po- Pokemon Yellow. Oh yeah, yeah, from what I heard, yes. And Pokemon Yellow is based on red and blue and green. So yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, at least we get to see them again. Red and blue. Oh yeah, it's still a good game. Still a good game. They did announce one thing. That is that it's a mandatory motion control game. So pretty much it's motion slash gyro control. Yeah, and then also there's the uh, add-on, which is the Pokeball. It looks quite, kind of nice. Uh, I dare, I do say. I don't have a Switch and I don't dare say much because, well... I, I don't own it. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the only Pokemon game I have is X on the 3DS. That's been a while now. Mm-hmm. But besides that, right, what are you looking forward to? What am I looking forward to? Uh, well, I've been checking out the Computex news. So uh, there was a lot of things that was uh, somewhat announced. And then uh, it was just too much news uh, here and there, like all the small non-pony stuff coming out here and there. I just want to say, uh, rest in peace, uh, Anthony Bourdain, who just recently passed away from having suicide. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is just sad. Like, he was a great guy. It's yeah. got to be something bad for him to, you know, yeah. But it, it's, it's pretty much just like out of nowhere and just, you just like gone. Yeah. Like, it was pretty much, it was pretty shocking. I mean, towards everyone who like watched his show and whatnot. I mean, I do watch some of his show, and it's actually quite. Uh, it was such a good show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh well, it can't be stated that we lost a great guy. Mm-hmm. So anywho, um, let's head on to my week, and my week has been rather dull. Um, the only eventful thing that happened recently for me is that, um, Overwatch, uh, updated their PTR to include the new Symmetra rework, and yeah. She's more annoying. I can see that because especially the ulti. The ult, okay. <laughs> Which is the giant barrier. <laughs> yeah, and I think what, it's about 15 seconds giant barrier. Okay, you would think that it's not that great and whatnot, but no, man. Like, think about how the game is it, played. Like, the game is... Cons- yeah. But considering the fact that, that I can see that pillar, uh, that barrier will stretch all the way up to the sky, pretty much it's... Like, it pretty much, you can say, anti Farah in a sense? Not really. I, I don't really know how big it goes because the situation is that uh, this character would be great in a close-lit room like uh, Nepal, Sanctum, uh, Nepal, House of like that, and also in Volskaya Industries and also um, in, in London. What was it? Row, something I forgot. That London map. But still, it would be great for those kind of uh, type spaces. But in terms for huge um, open areas like Route 66, uh, first point, they'll be terrible. Well, the more annoying thing now is that the the sentry is now a projectile. Oh yeah, the projectile sentries. <laughs> yes, you you 
Pretty Man, you, you you're gonna have a lot of uh, fun time with it, especially fling it all the way to the roof. And if they didn't notice it, next thing you know, it's they died to the sentry. Yeah, but you still can destroy the sentry in mid air. But the life point for the sentry is much higher than normal. I I noticed because it took me a while to destroy them with Winston, which is the counter for the Symmetra turrets. So yeah. Mm. Oh uh, damn! New Symmetra rework is good. It's good. It's interesting, and I would like to see how it goes on the main game. Um, also the whole endorsement system. That one is great. Like after playing, you endorse a teammate. You get twenty five extra um XP, and you can also endorse the opponent for um, sportsmanship, short call. And also great teamwork and whatnot. So yeah, those those are really good additions to the game. And also, if I do remember right, there's the role select kind of scenario. That one's good too. Other than that, uh, let's see. Other than that, uh, no movie watching. Um, what else did I do? Uh, well, I think that's about it, really. I mean, besides just sitting around doing nothing and editing the podcast. That's about it, I guess. So that's been my week. Unless you want to add anything more. Nope, I don't have anything else to add. Alrighty then. So anywho, uh, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsugmail dot com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbs show. Uh, my Twitter will be at norman sanzo and starway. Can the good people find you? People can find me on my DeviantArt Angelical XX or my Twitter, which will share the same name as my DeviantArt. Alrighty then. So also please subscribe and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PunivaLive.com. Links will be there in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Separate Heart Song, talk about the Pony episodes, comics, and also movies. And sometimes we like to talk about other things. And, well, we like to... Well, uh, there's this show called Miracle's Ladybug. Somehow, it makes Silver Quill and Separate Heart Song go insane with how cringy or whatever the show is. I kind of like it. And if you want to hear more crazy Silver... Uh, do go watch it it's fun if you like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com if you have support you will get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous I would like to thank Rekka Cat Star Stream myself like Amy Charles Knight and also Tristan thank you so much guys for the awesome support you have been really really great to me so anywho I have been Norman Sanzo Star Stream and we will guys see you next week with the Phantom Show. Yes, show. See ya. See ya. See ya.